Good morning, my dear. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. My topic today about uterine inversion. So what we wanted to discuss today, the definition, the degrees of uterine inversion, its incidence, its types, whether acute or subacute or chronic, etiology, clinical presentation in every type of them, diagnosis and differential diagnosis, and lastly treatment. Let us start our journey with the definition what inversion means. Inversion, as you see in the picture, turning the inside of the uterus out. The inside of the uterus out means that this is the endometrium in the outer surface here. So, turning of the inside of the uterus out, as you see in the picture here. And the picture here, also another one, representing the acute inversion, which happened after delivery. As you see here, the placenta is attached and the cord, the wild traction in the cord, the fundus is stretched down and the uterus is turned inside out, as you see here. This is an example of acute inversion and in this picture, another type of inversion, which is chronic inversion. And as you see here, as you see in the left picture here, this is a fundal fibroid. This fibroid caused traction and the cause the uterus to be inverted. And this type is chronic inversion. So this is an example of acute inversion. This is another type of chronic inversion. So inversion can present either in the purpuran due to obstetric cause or non purpuran I mean gynecologic setting. What are the degrees? We have four degrees. Please lock to this picture. The first degree, just there is cupping of the fundus here, depression and the fundus, but not reaching the cervical canal. In the second degree, this cupping the increase, so inversion increase and reach the cervical canal and the pass through the open cervix, as you see here. A while in the third degree, the whole uterus pass outside the vulva, as you see here, and this is complete inversion, total inversion. And in fourth degree, the whole uterus is outside and the vagin also. So this is the four degrees of uterine inversion. What about the incidence? Actually, Obstetric or burbural uterine inversion, which happen after delivery, is more commoner than chronic non burbural inversion. But both of them is not very common. And I can say that the chronic inversion is a rare disease. While burbural inversion, which is uncommon, may occur in one in every 2,000 deliveries or reaching 1 to 20, uh, uh, 23,000 deliveries. So I can say it is uncommon, but it is more commoner than chronic inversion. Chronic inversion constitutes only 16% of cases, while the all other cases are due to berberal uterine inversion. Indian is more commoner three times than United States women, the incidence of uterine inversion decreased fourfold after introduction of active management during third stage of labor, and you should know this information. What are the types of uterine inversion? We have acute, subacute, and the chronic one. If inversion happened within the first 24 hours after delivery of the baby, this is called acute inversion. If inversion happened after one day and up to four weeks postpartum, this is called subacute. If it happens after four weeks from delivery or in non-pregnant stage, 
the patient wasn't pregnant at all. So it can happen at any age, at old age, senile type, and so on. This is called chronic type. So I have acute, subacute, and chronic one. Etiological factors related to acute uterine inversion, usually you will find me separating the acute from the chronic inversion. Okay? So, what is the etiological factor related to acute uh, uterine inversion or barbara inversion, which happen after delivery? Maternal causes or fetal causes. Maternal causes may be related to uterine atony or use of tocolytic drugs or maybe structural anomaly in the uterus or maybe connective tissue disorder as in Marfan syndrome or maybe related to precipitate labor or previous history of uterine inversion or maybe iatrogenic cause due to core traction while the uterus was legs not contracted or maybe idiopathic while the factors related to fetal and placental causes may be macrosomic baby, fundal placenta, placental adhesions, placenta accreta, or maybe short umbilical cord. While on the other side, in chronic inversion related to three factors, berberal, old berberium after four weeks, and Fundal uterine tumor, whether, whether it is benign one like leomyoma or uterine sarcoma or senile inversion. The diagnosis, of course, include the clinical presentation, history examination, and also investigations like ultrasound and the MRI. The clinical presentation differ between acute inversion from chronic inversion. So, what about acute inversion? Usually the patient will complain of lower abdominal pain. This cramping lower abdominal pain, sometimes mild, intermittent pain, and depend on the degree of inversion. Associated with hemorrhage in more than 90% of cases, and sometimes shock occurred in 40% of cases, and postpartum collapse even. Okay? Okay. But you should remember that shock here may be related to hemorrhage and the neurogenic shock because the restriction on the surrounding peritoneum which caused neurogenic shock and associated with bradycardia. So maybe the amount of bleeding is not corresponding or propor uh, proportionate to the amount of uh, 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 bleeding because I have two factors here hemorrhagic and the, neuro and the neurogenic shock. What is the differential diagnosis of acute berberal inversion? Severe atony of the uterus, uterus vaginal prolapse, neurogenic collapse, postpartum collapse, fibroid polyp with pregnancy, postpartum collapse, retained placenta, and coagulopathy. What about the other type of inversion, which is a chronic inversion. What is the clinical presentation? Usually the patient presents with vaginal discharge, which may be offensive and profuse, and sometimes watery or virulent. Also, she, she complains of mass protruding from the vagina. Also, there is pain, severe intermittent colicky pain, and sometimes become chronic pelvic pain dyspareunia, irregular vaginal bleeding, and also if she is in a childbearing age, she may complain of an ability to conceive also. What about the local examination? Please look to this picture. By vaginal examination, by inspection, we will see here reddish mass protruding through the vulva. This mass, red, inflamed mass, with patulous cervix. If I try to insert sound, I cannot because the uterus is, is uh, turned inside out, so there is no cavity. I cannot insert the sound. Or if it is first degree inversion, I can insert, or second degree, I can insert only for short distance. 
Okay? Okay. There may be signs of inflammation or ulceration if prolonged, inversion, and neglected. And there is patulous cervix, as we said. What about the bimanual examination? Look to this picture, please. First, it will depend on the grade of inversion. First, if there is first degree, there is just cupping, cupping in the fundus of the uterus. But I still can feel the uterus. In second degree, I can feel the uterus with difficulty, as in the picture, because the uterus reached the cervical canal. A while in third degree, I cannot feel completely the uterus. There is no uterus felt on bimanual examination because it is completely outside. Okay? okay. The investigation which can be done is ultrasonography, cheap and available everywhere. And you can use it. And in this picture, this is an incomplete inversion type. And this is a complete inversion type. And please notice that the endometrium is the out lining here the endometrium um, because the uterus is turned inside out this is complete inversion and this is incomplete inversion another tool is the mri which is diagnostic also and i can use it if i am still in doubt in certain cases however this problem of inversion is diagnosed by clinical examination mainly and sometimes may i need ultrasonography. What is the differential diagnosis of chronic inversion? I should differentiate chronic inversion from any mass protruding from the vagina like sarcoma, polyp, like cauliflower carcinoma, like uterine or vaginal prolapse, also from fibroid polyp and you should differentiate it by the following. In fibroid polyp you can insert sound to long distance inside the uterine cavity. While in inversion, you cannot insert because there is no cavity, because the uterus is outside. Uterus can be filled per abdomen in case of typhoid polyp, while inversion, no. Pulling the mass with volcillum, the cervix moves downward in fibroid polyp and the upward in chronic inversion. This is another difference. How to manage acute uterine inversion? First, you should resuscitate your patient, give crystalloid, give blood transfusion, after insertion, of course, of white board, two white board cannula, and give the patient the proper antibiotics to avoid infection and call for help and call for anesthesia. Then you want the uterus to be relaxed because you, are, you will try to insert this uh, inverted uterus inside the abdomen again so you want the muscle of the uterus to be relaxed there is controversy about the use of the colitic drugs some advise the magnesium sulfate some advise beta mimetics but the best is terbutalin drug however if you are giving general anesthesia itself is a muscle relaxant so you may not use any other tocolytic drugs so, use tocolytic drugs according to case-by-case -case basis. Then, try to in insert this inverted uterus by hand, as you see in the picture. Please lock to the picture. You hold the uterus like that, with fingertips directed towards the uterus sacral ligament, like that. Gently try to bust the uterus through the ring, the cervical ring inside the abdomen. Okay? Gently, as you see here in the picture, then gradually push it, push it until the uterus regain its position again in the abdomen. If the placenta is completely separated, you insert a fist of one hand for three to five minutes until the ligaments become more strong to keep the uterus in position so it will not be the current one okay okay 
some advice after that we can if the case suspected to be recurrent we can insert bakery balloon caster and keep it inside for a while to prevent recurrence what about if manual correction failed we can shift to another line of treatment which is hydrostatic reduction what is the hydrostatic reduction please look to this picture we use warm saline infusion pass through the vagina and we close the introitus so this fluid will push the fundus and the body of the uterus to be again in its position gradually be careful all the time the fluid level should be above 150 centimeter above the vagina okay, and the continuum infusion until correction another method is to use ventus cup to keep it, to keep the vaginal enterotus closed and make the hydrostatic pressure of the fluid to work more properly this is another method so this is called hydrostatic reduction the complication of this method is transmission of infection failure of the procedure and saline embolus what about the management of acute uterine inversion of all other methods fail i have the surgical option either by laparotomy or laparoscopic assisted repositioning or cervical incision with manual uterine reposition in this picture you will see this is by laparotomy huntington and halton procedure what huntington and halton procedure huntington is to do laparotomy and to do traction on this round ligament this round ligament will do traction up of this round ligament try to help the uterus to regain its position a while halton is a helper here by doing incision in the posterior ring of the cervix here to give more space for the body of the uterus to regain its position to widen the ring so huntington is to do traction on the uh, round ligament while halton is to do incision in the posterior cervical ring here in this part Another method is to do laparoscopy. Also, laparoscopy will do traction on the round ligament and also we cut the uterovesical fold and cut the cervical ring anteriorly to keep a space while the, help, the assistant push the uterus from the vagina up to regain the position. This is the idea. To avoid recurrence, we can use and to manage also or reduce uterine inversion we can use bakery uh, intrauterine caster as you see it is has a balloon inflated at its end inserted inside the uterus it can be used to reduce inversion in the early degree of uterine inversion and also in cases suspected to be recurrent to keep it inside after correction of the inversion to keep it inside so inversion will not be recurrent what about the management of chronic uterine inversion actually chronic uterine inversion needs a surgical intervention why because uterine walls have very little elasticity to be reposited manually and usually the ring is a stiff the cervical ring is stiff so i cannot insert it manually or or using hydrostatic pressure as in other type of inversion acute inversion so this is a picture of uterine inversion associated with prolapse so i have three categories here the chronic berberal or late berberal inversion or fundal tumor whether benign or malignant or senile type let us start with the senile one senile one i can do hysterectomy straightforward is the best choice for this case what about 
الاندر تيومر بتبند في تزليومايوما اور ساركوما اور مالجنت If it is benign, I can do colpectomy if the patient is young, child bearing age, and we want to preserve her uterus. If the patient is old, uh, or the or the case is malignant, hysterectomy is a good choice and will go through the treatment of malignancy according to the stage and the type of malignancy. If the case was chronic puerperal inversion, I have. Three lines of treatment, either abdominal surgery like Huntington and the halted procedures as before, or vaginal surgery like Spinelli and the Kessner techniques, or laparoscopic assisted repositioning. Okay, let us look to this picture with Huntington. Huntington, as we said before, this picture, a case with laparotomy. For uterine inversion, here is the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. Here is the round ligament. This is the round ligament in both sides. We will do traction on the round ligament on both sides. This is what's called the Huntington procedure. And if we did incision posteriorly here, like in this picture, incision here to widen the cervical ring, this is called the Halton procedure. So we use both proceed with each other to help reposition. Spinelli and the Kessner techniques are vaginal techniques. The last one is laparoscopic assisted reposition. This is the Huntington procedure. Details, as we said, we do traction here on the round ligament. How while doing, this is Huntington, and here we will do incision this is halted procedure. As you see here, traction in the round ligament and the do incision here posteriorly in the cervical ring to make it capacious to allow the uterus to again regain its position. Spinelli and the Kistner technique. What is the difference between both? Both are vaginal surgeries. The Spinelli the idea here, I want to widen the cervical ring. So either I'll do cut in the anterior, in the midline, vertical incision of the cervical ring, as is spinelli. We do anterior colpotomy and the cut the ring anteriorly, vertically, anteriorly. Then again, push the uterus up. When the uterus regains its position, close by suture the site of incision. Kistner. We will do posterior colpotomy and open the cul de sac, then incise the cervical ring vertically, posteriorly, and maybe with part, a small part of the uterus. Then regain the uterus in its position, then suture the cut part in the cervix and the uterus. So, both of them, we cut the ring, but in spinelli anteriorly. While in Kessner, we cut the ring posteriorly. And the, at the end, we suture the cut end after we reposit the uh, after reposition of the ring. What about laparoscopic assisted? This is a picture of laparoscopic uh, treatment for uterine inversion. As you see here, this group represents the inverted uterus. And the only visible in the, in the pelvis here is the ovaries and the fallopian tubes and partly the round ligament. We'll do traction of the round ligament first, then we'll divide the uterovesical fold, dissect the bladder, then we will cut the cervix anteriorly, vertical incision anteriorly in the, in the cervix and uterus. To wide the ring, then the assistant will push the uterus from the vagina up. When the uterus is in proper position, regain its position, I'll suture the wound in two layers with one zero polyglectin interrupted 
future. Lastly, this is just to, to see something from the history. It is, it is an old, very old method for uterine inversion, used for uterine inversion, evening uterine repositor. This is how it locks. It is used in the past, and it's something in the hospital, in the history nowadays, no more years for many years ago. Thank you. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University.